I want to show you a new paper on protein evolution. Now remember, evolution says that the world arose by itself. When it comes to biology, that's going to mean mutations and other random events uh, form, create all of the species, the tens of millions of species, all of their designs, all of their incredible designs, on down to the molecules and even the proteins, the genes that create those proteins and so forth. So protein evolution is one of the many problems of evolution. Evolution needs to explain. These are very difficult problems for evolution. Protein evolution, no less so. The lead authors are Eugene Koonin and Yuri Wolf from the NIH, and they make two very big claims in this paper. It will be a very important paper. One uh, claim is that they have devised a method to reconstruct, simulate and reconstruct the evolutionary pathway by which proteins evolve. So as each mutation occurs, they'll track that, recapitulate the sequence of mutations and the resulting uh, protein structures as they approach the final evolved protein. The second claim that they make is that, well, protein evolution is actually pretty easy. Using their method, they discover that it's actually not that big of a deal. Now these results are exactly what evolutionists have sought for 50 years or more. Uh, they really wanted to have wanted to show how you could evolve proteins and it's a very difficult problem. It just seems to have been getting more and more difficult. But here we have a paper that, well there you have it, it has solved the problem or at least has taken a giant leap towards solving the problem. The left is rest, left to the student. But for the most part they've solved this problem. It's the fascinating claims that they're making certainly will be an award-winning paper and they're going to get some big awards for this if this is all true. Well there is just one little problem it isn't true in fact this is phony science it's garbage. Uh, what they do in this paper is they set up this method this simulation method to recapitulate the sequence of amino acids what you have to do when you're setting up that method is have a selection criteria. How are you going to move the protein from one uh, mutation to the next? How are these mutations selected? So you're simulating kind of the evolutionary process here. Now by the way, the paper doesn't claim to actually come up with the exact uh, pathway that evolution used. They're simply coming up with plausible pathways, pathways that could have been used to kind of realistically show the pathway by which an, uh, a protein could evolve. Still, it's a major claim, uh, and if it's true, it would, it would be uh, monumental. The problem is, how do you set up that selection criteria? When you have a random sequence and then you start mutating it, it still is not going to work very well. It's not going to do much. A random sequence plus a few mutations isn't going to do much. Somehow you have to have a gradual fitness, upward sloping fitness landscape that's going to select for the right mutations that will lead you toward a useful protein. So you have to have this gradual, smooth, upward sloping fitness landscape. That's crucial to this problem and that's been a big problem in the science for decades is coming up with this sort of a landscape that would um, create this evolutionary process, result in this evolutionary process. This paper takes that very lightly. They don't really even address it as a significant problem. They simply present this little nonchalant equation at the end of the paper as though it's not a big deal. Well, that's where all the heavy lifting is. It's equation four toward the end of the paper and it gives you the selection criteria. And the selection criteria they're using is to be condensing the, the collapsing of the, 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 the structure, cr selecting for structures that are more and more collapsed. Well, that's the whole problem, is collapsing that structure, selecting for mutations that are going to create a globular protein. I, I was doing this 25 years ago. The only difference is I didn't um, imagine for a moment that it was publishable. It wasn't research. I was simply exploring the space and the problem. Uh, this is nothing new. There's nothing significant here. Uh, one other interesting difference is that they're using these um, artificial intelligence neural net um, protein structure estimation tools. So that's, that's a nice little twist that they're using that. But there's nothing about this that 
uh, is realistically simulating the evolutionary process. Their selection criteria, uh, there, there's no scientific evidence that their selection criteria would actually um, uh, cause higher fitness. And that's the key. You have to have a selection criteria that causes higher fitness. When selected for, you're going to have higher fitness. Well, they've got a selection criteria. There's no uh, correspondence to fitness. I'm putting it lightly. It's ridiculous. The paper is a joke. This is phony science. In spite of the high claims that they make in the paper, in spite of the fact that it was peer-reviewed, the two peer reviewers should have caught this, should have, I mean, <laughs> it's not even catching it. It's just like, no, this doesn't work. This is not science. Um, it shouldn't have been published in a leading journal that it was, the Proceedings of the NAS, PNAS journal. So unfortunately, when you have evolutionists writing papers that show that evolution works, the bar is very low. Religion drives science and it matters.